Okay, today we're going to take a little tour of my 24-foot Mako that is for sale. I'm going to start up here at the bow. And as you can see, there's the anchor line with stainless steel chain and a rope that goes down into the deck. And this is the chain locker in there. I don't know if you can see, that's where the rope for the chain and stuff goes. And we step back a little bit. And we have another compartment here. And this is storing some life jackets, some marker buoys. This next one has some more life jackets and some oil for the engine. This one's got snorkel gear. This one has fire extinguisher, a couple oars, and a flare kit. And then we turn around. Now these off the front here all get covered with cushions, which are right here. So you have this nice cushion area to sit. And if you turn around and look, here we have this nice seat. It easily seats two to three people. And under it is some storage. I used to use this as the battery compartment for running some extra electronic equipment that I had on board. And we have these little side pockets here. And one behind the cushions over there. It's got the boat hook, shovel, and stuff like that in it. And this is the engine back here. If we turn around, this is the center console. It does have a VHF radio and a first aid kit in the silver in the compartment here. And then this is more storage underneath here. That's the old oil supply tank, and there's another fire extinguisher there if you need it. We'll talk about the oil supply tank here in a second. <clears throat> and then we also have this little glove box here and some switches for different items. And there is, this is the mount for the little GPS that comes with the boat. But it's not mounted right now. And this is my Bimini top. As you see, it's quite solid. It uh, does shade most of the boat, but if you want to have, go out and have some sunshine, you have the front deck you can always lay out on, or where the cushions are. Uh, it is very sturdy, but it's probably not strong enough to hang on, but it doesn't vibrate or anything and it gives you good coverage now down here in the floor we have a live well i actually have the valves for it turned off but it does collect a little rain water when it rains and it kind of comes through this door from the deck but it's easy to bail out on this side over here we have this compartment it's got a ski tow rope the anchor I use to put on the beach because uh, I usually come in stern first to the beach. I have my bow anchor out to be able to pull me off the beach in case I get stuck. There's a spare prop, some extra line, some extra oil. These are some extra lines and stuff here. And over here on this side, we have the dual batteries that are brand new. It's also a little tool kit and a spare fuel water separator cartridge for the fuel filter thing which is right in this compartment here now this is the engine let me uh, take the cover off here see this is the engine it's in very good shape it's a v6 johnson two cycle it's nice and coated with some spray stuff i put on there probably last year but uh, anyway it has six carburetors that are behind this uh, air cleaner here it has been done to this engine is the original engine had 
this thing right here, which is a fuel pump, and it was a fuel pump combination oil pump. And this engine automatically basically pumped the right amount of oil to go in with the gas. So they're kind of pre-mixed in this unit here. But if you uh, go on the internet, you'll find that these engines sporadically had a problem and that this unit would malfunction and you'd be driving along and you'd be not really putting in the amount of oil that you want and uh, it would end up burning up the engine. And it's very hard to detect that that's going on while you're driving around. So I got basically tired of worrying about it. And this is a conversion. And what that does is it just becomes a straight fuel pump. And so now you mix the fuel and oil together when you put it into tanks. So the tanks are full of oil mixed fuel. So you never have to worry about not having oil for your engine. Uh, and it's just very simple to do. It's a 50 to 1 mix. So if you put in 50 gallons, you put in a gallon of oil. If you put in 25 gallons, you put in a half a gallon. But that way you never worry about where you're going to burn your engine up. Uh, the foot on this engine is new. It's actually only got about an hour on it. But uh, I just don't use this boat much anymore. So uh, this is why it's for sale. Now let me put the cover back on. And we'll start it up. This engine hasn't been started for about two months, so we're going to see what happens. First, we put the cover back on. Very simple to do. Locks in. Oops. And down here, this is the pump to prime the carburetors. Yeah, it looks okay in the bowl over here, so I'm not going to burn that right now. I'll just do the fuel pumps. There we go, it looks nice. Now, usually this engine will start up on about three or four of the cylinders, and it takes a while for the carbs to uh, get all the fuel in them they need, I guess, to run solid. But it never has failed me. So here we go. To push the choke on the key. Throttle quadrant. It's a shift throttle all in one, and you push this button down here, and that lets you push the throttle a little bit forward without putting it in gear. So we can give the engine just a little bit of gas right, right there to help get it started. So here we go.
Okay, there you have it. Uh, she winds good. And like I said, it's been a couple months since it started, so it takes a little time for it to warm up. All the carburetors get filled up, and it's always done that. I don't know why. But anyway, uh, it runs good. Uh, let's see. Tilted up, batteries have been turned off, and we have the console cover back on. And everything's ship shape. So. If you're interested, give me a call, and there you have it.